previously on the Springston Legacy Challenge. I lost my ways. No words to say. You're on my mind. And time flies by. I'm cutting down the wires I'm feeling kind of tired I think I lost myself I think I lost it all You know it's true I've been thinking about you You made me feel so safe Right when you told me you were mine But I'm too late I can't undo my mistakes The time's run out and I'm Standing wet here in the rain The same old cloud hanging over my head God, I wish you were here to save me from myself You know it's true I've been thinking about you Hello my little sugar buggers, welcome back to the channel for another part of Let's Play The Sims 4 Springston Legacy Challenge. So many questions, so many stones left unturned. Now this part may be a really long intro because I have a ton of explaining to do. So very quickly, let me just go ahead and break down what happened in the short little machinima dubbed as Jean's Addiction or something of that sort. I can't really remember what it was called. But if you haven't checked it out, you should have because I put it in the beginning of this video and I will link it down below just in case you want to rewatch it again or I forget to put it in this video, which I believe would probably be the more likely of the two scenarios. All right, so let's talk about what happened from the very beginning. After the uh, birthday shindig or whatever, as you guys know, earlier in the morning, the two had a moment where they had reunited in a brief heat of the romance type of moment and they woohooed and I just, I can't even believe leave my eyes and after that you know we had a, a party where you know Gene aged up and everything was going good he just had an amazing time and honestly saw a glimmer of hope a glimmer of hope that he'd be able to get back with lavender and finally make his family whole again because in Jean's heart that is all this poor man has ever truly wanted um, and then after the party he had left and he had went home and he kind of had a moment where he was staring at the wall at, at all these photos that he had of lavender and memories just came flooding back into his head and um, he definitely wanted to reach for the glass of bourbon but instead when he went to go in and reach for the glass he looked in the mirror and saw him himself a, a very faint phantom of the person that he once knew this is not gene mckinley gene it changed his life he he was doing good lavender came back in like a storm from hell and literally just took him by by his ankles and shook him upside down but he doesn't regret that for a moment um so when he was looking at himself in the mirror he's like you know what i need to go back there i need to proclaim, proclaim my love to, to, to the person that means more to me in, in the entire universe and he he wanted to he didn't want to waste any more time hence hence the the lyrics in the song and he gussied up he he cleaned himself he threw away that dumb hat and it was time for him to grow up so as he came back to the residence um he had seen jake and lavender on the porch right here and um i think i said Jean. I meant Jake. <laughs> and when he walked up, he just walked in. It was literally the wrong place at the wrong time. He saw them basically making out, and it honestly felt like a dagger in his heart. Why? Because this is the man. This is the man that literally took his woman and threw her in jail, even though she's guilty. And then on top of every freaking thing else, you know, this is the reason. He is the reason why he lost Indy. He is the reason why um, he he lost the love of his life. This man has taken everything from him. And then here they are just making out in, in, in front of them. And all he could think about is the morning and how, you know, 
they had this passion and just it was just too much for him. But what a lot of you didn't see and some of you did <laughs> um, was you saw that after Gene has turned his back and started to walk away and have a meltdown that that um, when when they were kissing Lavender started screaming at Jake and he came to drop off the children and he came to drop off Isaiah and Landon and, and in the fit of all that he was trying to rekindle their romance like Jake wanted to get back with Lavender um and Lavender just wasn't having it you know she said she had moved on she doesn't want to keep playing these games with him she no longer feels anything for them and it's strictly raising the children and in fact she's in love with somebody else and that somebody else was Jean well Jean didn't see nor hear any of it so of course you know the first thing that he goes back to the one thing that's always been there is that bottle of gin is that bottle of whiskey and that bottle of bourbon and he went off to the bar and literally got planted ish faced if you will and in all of that, he drank himself to damn near death. I mean, he has an underlying liver problem from all of his drinking. His alcoholism has literally taken a toll. And uh, he definitely had what you would call an angel watching over him um, that night. And that angel, so to speak, was Amelia May Springsteen. Now, Amelia has done many things in her life, and she has taken away a lot of things from Lavender. And the one thing that she knew that Lavender loved more than anything in this entire universe Universe and couldn't afford to lose was Jean McKinley. So by the love of God, she went ahead and I don't know, she saved his life. How? Who knows? Uh, basically what happened is he he walked out of the establishment, fell to the floor. He just honestly, his liver gave out. He had alcohol poisoning, just dropped like a sack of potatoes. And um, nobody really was outside. Nobody really saw it. But it was a matter of minutes until he had died. So, you know, nobody saw anything. Nobody even knows how the, the, the ambulance, how 911 was even called. Um, but we know how it was called. And we know who really, truly saved Jean McKenley's life. And I guess it is the devil in disguise herself. But of course... Nobody knows that. Nobody knows. And Jean did see Amelia's ghost um, standing over him. And, you know, he's just going to think he was just too wasted. But uh, I wonder if he'll mention that a little bit later on. That would be kind of interesting. So as you guys know, now Jean McKinley is not dead. I know we have a lot of people who are not necessarily Jean fans, but I hate to break it to you. He's like a cockroach. He has a thousand lives. He ain't did. Um, but however, he did go to the hospital and it's technically a week later. And, um, you know, he was admitted to a halfway house. Um, located off in Newcrest. Now, he re voluntarily checked into this facility because he wants to get better. He wants to be better. And um, he doesn't want to be, you know, codependent on any sort of substance for any amount of period of time. He wants to become a famous painter. He wants to pursue his dreams and his goals. And he is very embarrassed and ashamed of himself for, for you know, everything. And when Lavender got that phone call that night, the, the phone call that she had on honestly been dreading um he puts her down as his next of kin um or you know spouse or whatever some other bs you I mean obviously you know so that she could have access to his medical medical records and just have access to him in general and he was in the hospital for a few days recovering he was literally no lie you guys on the verge of death on the absolute freaking verge um and he knows that if he doesn't get help for his alcohol abuse that it will honestly be um, it'll be at the ends of him. And so, of course, Lavender was pissed and furious and called him every name under the sun. It called him stupid. It said he's ridiculous. She had to hold her tongue in a lot of it because, you know, that's not going to help. He is struggling with a serious freaking addiction right now. And um, so this morning, she went ahead and finally received a call from, from the halfway house. I think it's called um, Halfway There Estate or something like that. Why are we getting all... Oh, no! Now that Indigo has pretty, has pretty good grades, some bullies have been picking on her lately. Should she confront them with a witty comeback or ignore them and hope they'll pick a different target? Oh, hunty. Indy don't play, baby girl. She will slay you to the gods and make you cry like the worm that you are. Confront them, boo. You get it. Get it, girl. Get it get it get it girl if the bullies okay if the bullies responded too well to crafted arguments they wouldn't be bullies they understand that they are being insulted but they don't quite understand how and that just makes them matter well come on honey because you've got a storm coming all right you don't know who you're messing with okay she will freaking burn holes through your soul all right so anyway um 
they talked on the phone. They've had conversations about everything. She explained what he had. It just she, the whole thing has been talked about through them, right? So he wants her to come visit him. And it's been only like, okay, it's been five days that he's been there because he was there for a couple days in the hospital. Um, and uh, she's a little nervous to go see him. She is. She wants to, of course. Um, getting back together, I don't know. Um, I'm not saying that there isn't and there is, and I know some people just want me to like forget it and drop it and blah, 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 but I can't, I can't. She, the woman is in love with him. The woman cares about him. And you know what? This thing happens. This, this very same circumstance happens in life all the time. People go back and forth and it's annoying and it's frustrating, especially cause I'm sure we all love lavender and want the best for her, but it is what it is. And that's, that's all that there is to it. And, um, I, I do think that they will get back together to be a hundred percent truthful with you. I do feel like there is a very big possibility that the, that this is the turning point in their relationships, that this is exactly what Jean needed, what they needed as a couple to hit rock bottom so that they can finally rebuild um, with, with no BS in between, no hurt feelings. Like they are literally on equal playing grounds right now. Um, so hopefully you can support that. And if you can't support her decision, that is totally okay with me. That is fine. But uh, that's just the way that it is. And yes, we are focusing on Indy. And yes, we're moving forward with the legacy. It's just that there are some, there is some a little back and forth. It's, it's just the way that it is. Um, but anyway, here we are. This is the estate. I did actually download very, uh, very few, no, uh, quite a bit of Sims from my hashtag USLP. Uh, where you guys submit your sims to, for me to put into my LPs and I picked a handful of your sims to use as my my rehabilitants. <laughs> I don't know, is that word? Is that is this English or is it simlish? I don't know. We're just making up languages as we go, boo. Um, but yeah, so I, I decided to go ahead and put them into the house and I'll, and I'll introduce you and all that stuff. But um, we are about to go ahead and enter the estate now. And it's called Halfway There Estate. I love it. Um, and uh, I don't know, she's feeling confident. She's feeling good. So this is what it looks like. We have like a little medical sign. It's just a very beautiful manor. Um, in the back, we have some, oh, we have, oh, who's this? Okay, this is Alex Bennett. Um, she is one of the, uh, I guess you could say tenants here or whatever. Um, basically what it is, it's a big gigantic house that's full of, um, you know, people who are in need of some assistance and rehabilitation. And Gene has checked himself in here with the very few simoleons that he has left. He sold his house um, and decided to, to come here for a while. How long? I honestly don't know. But the cool thing is that these people who live here, they get free reign. They can go to jobs. They can go work. They, they aren't perm. They aren't like, they're kind of like, a, how do you say, outpatient, um, out patients, uh, what you call it? I don't even know how to call them. Outpatient patients. <laughs> uh, so what is Lavender doing right now? I don't actually know if Jean is present at this point in time. If he's here, he said to come over and I know that he doesn't have a job or he may actually, I don't really know if he does have a job. Okay. Yeah, he does. He is actually in the painter's career, you guys, and he'll be working till 5 PM. So I should have checked to see um, what time he was going to be here, but it's okay. I can, oh, I don't want to flirt with you. I mean, not that you're not pretty or something, but I mean, like, that's just kind of awkward to be like, hey, <laughs> how you doing? Nice bathing suit. Um, but we're introducing ourselves to the, the roommates and, and, and all the people here. And I think this is really, um, productive to kind of see where we're at and, you know, like where Jean is currently residing. So this is also, I think her name's Al Elena. Um, and you guys can go ahead and tell me what, you know, what you think they're in for. So I think her name, her name, we're just going to call her Ellie. Uh, and then we have Alex. And then we have one of Jean's good friends here. Um, his name is Everett. And, uh, he's actually becoming really, 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 really close with Jean. Um, they have a lot of, a lot in common, same, same addiction, except his is a little more, a little more complicated. He's, um, dealing with, uh, different types of substance abuse and, other things like that that I'd rather not mention, like gambling addiction, stuff like that. Not not cool things. Um, but 
they're all here to get help and they're all here to be a better person and the warden is this lady right here so Louise Hudson she actually is a former addict herself and uh, in this home they have a lot of proper like you know things that help sims to progress in the field they have you know pool they have um you know different types of equipment uh, a little study nook where they could do research, things like that. Apparently, uh, Ellie is not interested in all that. But, I mean, right now, Lavender is just kind of hanging out and just getting acquainted here. Which is good because, you know, when we come back in here earlier, it's, or later, it's not going to take too much to get um, checked in. So, I don't think that I can invite Gene to come over. I do believe he is currently working, which is totally fine. Um, oh, Braxton Carey, I can't get you out of my mind. Do you want to go? I mean, I'm not trying to go on a date with him because of anything at all. I mean, I'm a single girl and I can have guy friends, right? Is this okay? You're, someone's going to yell at me. So let's just do it anyway. All right, we're going to go grab a bite to eat and wait for Jean. I really would. I, I feel like Braxton and I were good friends at a point in our lives and I feel like I just want to be honest with everybody. I feel like Lavender has a really freaking big problem stringing people along. Do you feel that way? Or am I like the only one? I feel like that. I feel like she can't get it together. Um, but we'll, we'll play with her a little bit. We'll let her go and, and, you know, have a little burger. Hopefully, the only beef she's having is on that patty, baby. <laughs> and um, after that, we'll... We will go ahead and uh, see how Indy is going as well. Lavender has been doing a lot of thinking, you guys, about whether or not she should allow Aiden um, and, and Indy to see each other. But given the fact that she keeps going back with Jean every two seconds of the day, like she's basically wore, wearing out her favorite pair of underwear. Well, that would be hypocritical now, wouldn't it, if she wouldn't allow her daughter to be with her one true love? Aha, uh -huh, that's what I think, too. So I feel like she's, I feel like she's thought about it. And uh, what are you doing? Why are you talking to me? Oh, you're the host. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so nasty. Um, but anyway, I, I really do feel like she should... Uh, God, you're hot. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, in a different time, in a different life, you and I could be just fine. But, oh, you got a new sports car. I'm going to compliment your outfit, boy. You got them tickets? Tickets to the gun show? Mm -hmm, Braxton, yeah, baby. If you don't want him, I do. <laughs> but really, Jen, you need to chill out. But uh, yeah, we're just being friends. Just friends, guys. Don't get it twisted. Um, I want to see if I can just ask to be friends. We don't have anything romantic going on, but we do. See this little bar right here? I think. I don't know. It's cool for him to want to come out with me and to want to grab a bite to eat. But I'm not, it's not romantic. Like, you can have, have, you can have friends, guys. I don't want you to think, like, oh my god, here we go again. Jennifer is adding another love. And no, honey, no. We're just, we're just squashing any confusion, okay? All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. Um, and I'm, I was trying to have something with Jean, but it didn't work very well. I'm going to have a, cop, a coffee. I think, I think Braxton's going to have a salad punch. And uh, let's also grab a Caesar salad. Do you know freaking that Caesar sauce, Caesar dressing is made out of anchovies? Uh, hunty, that is why my breath be smelling fishy. You know, I thought it was for other reason, but, you know, clearly it's an anchovy on that sauce. I did not know that. And I don't like fish. And I don't like anchovies. Because to me, they're like the, the, the little, the garbage. They're like the, the bottom of the barrel. That's disgusting. I don't know why. I just don't like it. A couple of the things that Lavender wants to do. She wants to sell a painting. And she also wants to play an instrument. Um, I feel bad for Indy getting freaking picked on at school, though. Like, seriously. I wonder if she will be, like, enemies with the bully. Oh, look. She knows a little girl named Jocelyn. I bet you that's the mean girl. Wait, didn't she meet? Yeah, she met him at a freaking teen party. What the hell am I even saying? <laughs> Alright, I know. But I think she should be friends with Jocelyn. I like Jocelyn. I wonder who's bullying her, though. My guess is probably Rayleigh. Or Riley. Whatever. Whatever your name is. Obviously, your name should be irrelevant. Um, or maybe it's Sophia. Who do you, who do you think is bullying her? Because honestly, side note, I ain't tolerating that ish. Anyway, 
Oh my god, he's being so flirty with her right now. That's so gross. I am not interested. I, I knew he, he wants to have, like, some sort of, like, romance with her. But I need to, like, not and say that I did. I'm literally here for a burger, you guys. Like, that's it. Free meal. Um, but for whatever reason, they're, they're just, like, having, like, this romantic banter. That's disgusting. Like, my man is in, in, like, halfway house. So let's go ahead and have a deep conversation with Braxton. Letting him know that we are not interested in that life. Um, where the hell? is my burger like I am waiting so long to eat this damn crap like can we please all right so obviously she's telling me or telling them my order now can that be mine can that be mine okay listen here okay all right mrs. eyebrows <laughs> when, I, when I go on the internet and I search eyebrows <gasps> no I'm just playing that's gross and I just put all over the freaking mic like if we had a conversation in real life you need window wind window wipers yeah wind window wipers on your freaking face okay all right, so let's hurry up and eat this damn burger. I'm tired of talking to Braxton. I like Braxton. He's a great guy. Cool dude. I wish him many, um, many levels of success. Uh, I kind of feel like I should hook him up with somebody. What is he doing? Where are you taking your chili, dude? Where are you taking your... Where are you going? He's like, fine. You want to talk to me? That's cool. Whatever. No, nah, he ain't doing that. I'm just... She, see, it's she, she joking, though. She just... It's just... It's just... It, I... Shut up. All right. So now that I've done that, and I feel like there's just a lot going on here, I'm going to go ahead and pay the bill. I'm going to give him a hug first. You know, thank you for coming out. Thank you for being so understanding. Um... You know, I'm going to give him a little bit of a friendly hug, and then I'm going to take my caboose back over to go see Jean. Um, this is taking extremely long. If we don't have to give you a hug, that is totally okay with me. I'm actually going to go ahead and end and pay for the meal. And then now I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to give try to give Mr. Braxton Carey a hug goodbye. It was nice catching up with him. I'm, I'm allowed to have friends, guys. I'm allowed to have friends. Sometimes I feel like you guys are like my parents. I do. I feel like you. Like you, you always question what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, let's go and, and have her give him a hug, which they did just now. And she's going to use the restroom before she goes over to go see Jean. Now, at this present time, she would really rather Indy not go with her. Um, you know, she kind of wants some alone time with Jean. Just a little one-on-one, -on -one, if you guys could understand. Um, but I think it'll be nice just to kind of catch up with him. And that's all that we're really doing is just spending some time with this man. I, this is more of like an update part of what happened. Um, a little bit of an explanation, obviously. And um, I feel really good in my heart. I really do. Like, I feel like we need to close this chapter, get closure before we can officially move on with Indy. And I feel like that there needs to be closure in her heart, too, because this is something that's going to bother her. Like, even though Indy is starting to become the main character and we're shifting on to her, her father is always and will be, like, the apple of her eye. She is most certainly a daddy's girl. And uh, here is Mr. Gene McKenley wearing, oh, wow, I don't even know what he's wearing. But he honestly, you guys, he looks so haggard. He really, really does. But I'm going to be honest with you. Those freaking green eyes. Those green eyes. Mm -mm -mm. I just, I can't. I can't. I want her to go up to him. And I really just want her to pro pro the protest or profess. Pro what is it? Um, I think it's proclaim. I need to be any of those. Uh, her undying love for Jean. Like, I really just want her to, like, you know, finally. What are you doing? Why are you talking to him? I just want her to finally, you know, let him know how she feels and this is such a beautiful place i don't know why we're playing charades right now but there we go um i honestly wish this chick would just you know get away from me and uh, move away what is she doing um i kind of want to go like can you go away please i'm not trying to be rude or anything but i kind of feel like we were trying to have a moment and she's like all up in my business so jean's like hey why don't you come inside real fast well obviously i have to be let inside so i'm gonna go and knock on the door apparently okay cool and uh where did he go so i'm gonna come back over here and i'm gonna try to have a moment with him i'm gonna give him a little bit of a pep talk you know try to be very supportive of everything that he's going through um, and I, I want us to come maybe go outside for a little bit and enjoy the sunset and maybe talk up on this bench. Like I said, he needs to make some sort of progress before. I mean, he can leave anytime, you guys. He doesn't actually have to stay here. It's more of like a, um, more of like a personal preference. Like it's something that he wants, you know. 
Um, but I want to, I want to love on him. I, I really do want them to get back together and, you know, start over and just be happy and, you know, not, not be so self-destructive and keep doing this to themselves because I feel like that is just so unhealthy. Like they really could be happy together. And I feel like it's for, I feel like it's for Indy's well-being as well that they, that they work things out. Some people aren't meant to, to be together and I get that. I really, 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 really do. But they're soulmates, you guys. Like, they're soulmates. They have every single thing under the freaking sun. And um, I feel like they have, like, this childish love and this unconditional love. Like, they have been through so freaking much. And for... Dear Jesus, would you... Listen here, braids. GT... GTFO, okay? I'm trying to have a moment with my man and you all up in my business. All up in my business, girl. I mean, I love you. You're cute, but you need to, you know. I'm, this is why. Why is she playing so damn nosy? <laughs> okay, do you want to come sit? Oh my goodness, she just totally popped a freaking squat in between her and Dean. Um, but I don't know. I I think that they may actually, um, they may actually get back together, and I think that they should go on a date or something, maybe on t Friday tomorrow. And um, who knows what could happen from there. He, I guess that they're allowed to do all that. They're allowed to, to go out and stuff and, and have fun. And they're not like, they're not in jail, you know. Um, and he doesn't have any like criminal charges pending against him um, for being drunk. But um, I'm really liking this. I really am. I did actually want to go ahead and I wanted to give him that painting. Where is it? Okay, this one here. Um, I don't know if I can give it to him. I can't. Oh, I can put it in the house, though. Oh, I love them. Um, let me go put it in his room. I don't know if I, I showed you guys this, but this is actually Jean's room for the time being. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go and place that in there with him. Because I feel like it fits his room beautifully, doesn't it? It's so nice. I'm actually going to name this one, um, I'm going to name this one Hope. And I'm going to obviously put, uh, I love you oh my gosh what am i doing oh yeah that's right i'm doing me i'm <laughs> just kidding <laughs> all right i love you hope i love you um just a little a little memento to keep him inspired i kind of want to take a photo with him too they're just enjoying their moment you guys there's really not that much happening right now um but i definitely want to take a photo with him and something i can i can show indy to show show him her bleh, that you know dad's doing good and, and he he can't drink anymore you guys like seriously like their date has to be like going out for dinner or something low-key oh my god they're getting older um something you know where he's not gonna have you know, not like a bar where the whole point is to drink, you know, he just, he can't be around that right now. He has to be around something a little more, um, a little more chilled and toned down. So the curfew here is 10 o'clock, um, unfortunately. So I actually do need to go ahead and say goodbye. I'm going to give him one last kiss because it looks like he needs to go pee pees anyway. Which is totally fine. I just want to give him a quick... Oh, my God. He's, like, running to the bathroom, you guys. He's like, I, Lav, I love you, but, like, honey. And she's, like, hella stalking him. And he's like, no, but, like, I really got to go pee. So we need to we need to go out of here right now before we end up getting in trouble. I'm actually just going to go ahead and um, switch to... Uh, switch to control Indigo Springstead. And I think that when we have Lavender come home, she's going to go ahead and sit her down and say that, you know what? I am going to respect you and Aiden's relationship as long as you respect me as an adult. Um, but I mean, I hope that that, I hope that that will work. I don't honestly know. <laughs> we'll have to see what happens. But, uh, what is she doing? She's up in the tower right now, which is so cute. I'll let, I'll let Lavender spend a couple. I'll let her break her own damn curfew. Um, I want to come over here really fast and I also want to give Aiden a call. Um, and you guys got to let me know in the comments down below who out of all of these teen sims do you think is bullying her? Because, you know, just for fun, we might have to make a little quarrel. You know what I mean? I'm going to go ahead and uh, give him a quick chat, a quick little call because they haven't talked in a few days, obviously, because of everything that is going on. And Lavender is past curfew, so we're going to have her go ahead and come here. 
Um, I'm gonna actually come up to her and I am going to give her a deep conversation. She needs to hang up the phone though, like real quick <laughs> before mom, before mom comes in. And obviously the little boys are here and they're so bored. They had like a horrible day in school. They kind of want to live with dad. Is that bad that they want to live with Jake? They do. They really do. I don't know if we should have the boys live with Jake, but uh, she's having a deep conversation with her and uh, basically everything that I told you guys and um, Indy's like, okay, mom, like, I'm sorry, you know, I just, I really care about him and I hope that you can, you can understand that and, you know, she's like, I can't, I've, I've been there and all that kind of stuff and they're like very briefly talking about, about Jean and, and everything and, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and like give her a quick little hug. I'm going to give my mom a hug just for being so understanding and absolutely freaking amazing. And Lavender has learned the following traits about Indigo, that she is a vampire. What? I don't even think Indigo knows that she's a vampire. I don't know how that's going to affect her. I don't know if this trait actually does affect her in any sort of way. Um, vampires, basically now you can't and be the ultimate blood sucker personality trait, but you can't really do anything when you're a vampire yet. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I am low key just hoping and praying that at some point in life they add vampires so that I can actually outlive this fantasy of mine. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have Indigo go work on some of her homework the boys kind of they want to work on they need to work on their homework <gasps> where the hell did you get a voodoo doll madame zoe's voodoo doll like ooh, indigo maybe the vampirism starts now <laughs> with her bully um side note you know just saying hey holla at your girl but uh, i'm gonna actually let lavender go ahead and go to sleep she's apparently really hungry and i think i'm gonna go wrap up this part um i don't know what our little landon landon yeah landon is doing outside but we're gonna have him go upstairs and uh we're gonna let him go sleepy sleepy jim i'm um, gonna have him claim this bed and then i'm gonna have isaiah go and claim this bed um as well but yeah you guys can let me know a couple things who do you think is bullying indy how do you think we should handle that? It's just kind of our revelant out of the grant and scheme of things. And also, should the boys indeed go live with Jake? Since that is kind of something that they are wanting. Um, which I, I can understand. I don't feel like that would be a bad thing. Uh, but I also don't know how Lavender would handle that. You know, it's just something that they are feeling. You know, they're freaking eight and nine. Or, well, they're twins, aren't they? So, like, they're freaking obviously not eight and nine. They're eight or nine is what I meant to say. Um, but either way, I don't really care if they do. That's like kind of up to them. Um, or up to you guys even. <laughs> you can decide and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But I think with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this part here. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, and yeah, don't forget to go and rate, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below where the sun doesn't shine. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys. goes on but that's okay why can't you stay right here with i said right here